If you're in the market for a pre-built NAS device, you're probably questioning why Synology devices cost more, have worse hardware, and haven't really evolved at all compared to the competition. You can buy a device right now that has a much better CPU, more memory, better networking capabilities, and costs less. So it begs the question, why would you buy a Synology NAS? I almost went with another NAS manufacturer who had better hardware when I bought my first device, and if I did, none of WonderTech would exist. I did my research and was convinced after doing so that I had to buy a Synology, and even though, quite frankly, I didn't want to spend the money on the hardware, I did. So in order to understand why you probably should end up buying a Synology device too, it's important to understand what makes Synology devices so special, and it all comes down to three letters. DSM. Synology makes an operating system, which we'll break down in a minute here, called DSM. It is to a NAS what Windows is to a PC or Mac OS is to a Mac. But like Mac OS, you can't get DSM without buying Synology NAS hardware. So for a second, let's break down what's important when it comes to NAS hardware, because if it's so important for you to have better hardware, we should probably understand why. So on a NAS, you're generally not using the operating system directly. Of course, you'll periodically access it and you'll be in it to initially configure it, but once you configure it, it just kind of works, or at least it should. For this reason, the biggest sticking point for most people is networking. Since most Synology devices come with one gigabit NICs by default, you'll get at an absolute max 125 megabytes per second of transfer speeds. This is a limitation for a lot of people, and these devices probably should come with two and a half gigabit NICs, especially in 2024. Next is memory, which is important, but for most regular users, four gigabytes will probably be enough. And finally, the CPU. The CPU is considered by some to be the least important part of the device, but regardless, it's the brain of the operation. It'll help with speeds when accessing the UI, the overall performance of the device, and generally, how many processes the device can handle at the same time. Everything I just said is either periodic or a short-term thing. And for day-to-day -day activities, a lesser CPU will be almost unnoticeable to a regular user. But regardless, there's one point that remains. Synology's hardware is objectively worse than its competitors. So why would anyone purchase an objectively worse device that costs more money? DSM. DSM is the best pre-built NAS operating system that exists today. And this is why. In order to understand DSM, we need to understand what makes a good NAS operating system in the first place. I view NAS operating systems like a pyramid. Just bear with me. The higher you go on the pyramid, the less important things are, but the foundation that exists will support those more unimportant things. The base of any good NAS operating system is the storage pool and volume. Based on whatever Synology device you purchase, you can configure a storage pool using RAID or SHR and configure a volume using BTRFS or EXT4. You can also add on things like SSD caching, but you don't have to. This is important because if you run into any problems at this level, everything else is useless. It is the most important part and generally, Synology devices are rock solid in this area. Which then brings us to the next level, which is folder management. Now this encompasses a lot. It's not only the creation of the shared folder, but it's the permissions and actually accessing the data using SMB, NFS, or any other file protocols. If this tier doesn't work right, either the data will be accessible by people that it shouldn't be, or it won't be accessible at all. It is network attached storage. This is how you access the storage. This needs to be good, and it is good in DSM. The third and last, what I'll call critical aspect of any good NAS operating system is security and data integrity. First, you have to feel as if the OS and data is secure on the device. If it is, you have to ensure that specific data integrity features like snapshots, which protect against things like ransomware attacks and backups, which are of the utmost importance when it comes to NAS devices, work and work well. Synology has a tool called Snapshot Replication, which allows you to automate snapshots and hyper backup to backup the data that exists on the NAS. Without these tools, a ransomware attack or physical hardware issue can cause you to lose all of your data. Without the foundation of RAID and shared folders, this section is useless. But with those areas working well, this is critical and it works well on DSM. Finally, I'm going to put literally everything else in this last tier. This is your Photos app, your drive syncing tools, Docker, PC backups, all the stuff that is really nice to have when everything else actually works. 
Synology is generally very good in this area and has very good first and third party application support. But the truth is, if you get to this part, you're probably pretty happy with everything else and it means you have a good NAS. And quite honestly, this is where I lose my patience with other NAS manufacturers. I have tested fairly extensively other pre-built NAS operating systems and have had nothing but problems with them. I don't wanna call out these vendors in specific, but if you look at my channel or website, you'll see exactly who I'm talking about. I've seen a lot of comments lately praising the hardware of these other manufacturers, quite honestly, for good reasons, and that's what normally gets me as well. It's generally great hardware. The problem is the operating system. The UIs normally have bugs. There are times I've had to restore from a snapshot and it didn't work right. I've had problems with the backup tool. Other NAS manufacturers have a lot of security incidents, we'll call them. All the stuff I just mentioned is absolutely critical NAS functionality. And when you run into any of the problems I've run into, you're not gonna be happy that your device has more memory, a better CPU, or better networking. All you're gonna care about is the data that you are storing on the NAS is gone. I wanna be clear about this because when I had to restore from that snapshot and it didn't work, the data was gone. There was nothing I could do but restore from a backup, which fortunately worked, which is not a fun experience when you consider the exact same task on a Synology NAS probably would have taken me like 30 seconds in total. It also meant that I completely lost my faith in the product. I no longer felt like I could store the important data I had on the device because if I really had to, I wasn't confident that the restore for either a snapshot or backup would actually work. I promise you, this is the absolute last thing you want. After the initial excitement of having a new device wears off, all you'll care about is reliability and that's what Synology provides that a lot of these other NAS manufacturers are currently lacking. So my point is, most of these devices have objectively better hardware than Synology. Objectively better hardware that is a bunch of software problems, at least right now and it's not gonna work right when you need it. So are you gonna buy an objectively better device with objectively worse software? Are you gonna even notice that the hardware is better when the software you're interacting with doesn't work right? I almost did when I purchased my first NAS, but you need to consider this stuff. This is the problem, and this is the reason why you either went with or will go with Synology. This is also the reason why they don't have to innovate, can release devices with objectively worse hardware and charge more for it. We as consumers don't really have a choice, and if we actually want a functional and reliable NAS, Going with the Synology is really our only option right now. Your best other option is to build a DIY NAS and use TrueNAS, OpenMediaVault, or Unraid. But there is a lot more involved with that, and it's very different than just buying a pre-built NAS. So please, before you jump to another manufacturer for better hardware, please do your own research. Visit Reddit, go to a Facebook page or forums or something. Check to make sure that you know what you're buying into because no one wants to throw money into the wind. But ultimately, you should buy what you want. This video isn't sponsored by Synology. I'm not making this as anything other than a disclaimer of some of the issues that I personally have run into. So hopefully you don't. But again, if you get to the point and you say it's still the right device for you, go for it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.